What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Corning. I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. Now, there's been a lot of more information come out about the Titan, the missing Titan sub that uh, was, you know, had its fate sealed moments after descending last week, Sunday. But some more curious uh, decision making by their CEO, who appeared to be cash desperate begging people to, in some cases at least allegedly, trying to bamboozle people into getting on that sub that we now know uh, was doomed to fail. And then according to many experts, or many opinions anyway, that it was not a if it was going to fail, it was a when is it going to fail based on the structure and the design decisions that they had made on that sub and the amount of stress testing that was done or not done. Now we're also getting uh, this this version of the I missed my flight on uh, on on uh, you know on September the 11th stories coming out uh, of the sub at least two now I believe uh, but the one is uh, that's gaining a lot of attention is a uh, Mr Beast apparently he was invited onto the ill fated sub and he had either not replied or declined to go Mr Beast says that he was almost on the Titan submersible that imploded while diving to the Titanic wreck. It's been a huge news stories and celebrities have been weighing in on it earlier this week. Cardi B criticized the stepson uh, for attending a Blink-182 concert, don't really care. Adele also conducted an impromptu poll during one of her Vegas shows in which she quizzed the audience on whether they have taken a ride. Um, YouTuber Mr. Beast recently shared a screenshot of a text on Twitter in which was uh, allegedly invited to join the Titan on a journey late this month, which would have possibly been around the time of this fated expedition. There's a tweet that says here, you know, from Mr. Beast. Again, it's when we get into more about the CEO, it will all make sense. So, so I'm going on to the Titanic in a submarine late this month. The team would be stoked to have you along. I'm sure you're also welcome to join. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, uh, maybe they said a, a later date. Mr. Beast has invited earlier this month to ride the Titanic submarine. I said no. Kind of scary that I could have been on it. Uh, now, some people are saying, oh, uh, it's blue. That means it was never red or something like that. I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, you know, Mr. Beast, I don't think is a liar. Um, <clears throat> and he also certainly doesn't need clout. So, you know, it's certainly possible that he says, you know, I'll say, we'll see if I hear anything more about, but what's more scary is some of the stuff we're finding out about the CEO Stockton rush Titan sub CEO is on a predatory hunt for rich clients to join the deadly dive industry leader says ocean gate CEO Stockton rush was on a predatory hunt looking for wealthy clientele to support his costly deep sea submersible trips to the Titanic. According to an industry expert. Rush, who was one of five passengers on the vessel when it suffered a catastrophic implosion, could be incredibly persuasive when it came to his dangerous diving missions, even somehow convincing French, French Titanic expert, uh, president of the Triton submarines, he told the Times, quote, he could even convince someone who knew and understood the risks. It was really quite predatory. Leahy, who was one of his friends, told the Times, Leahy, who was company is the leading manufacturer and has been involved in the creation and testing of 60 human rated submersibles says he warned Nargolay 77 before he decided to join the doom dive last week I told him in very candid terms why he shouldn't be out there he understood I believe PH thought in some way that being out there he could help these guys avoid something terrible but instead he ended up in the middle of it I told PH that going out there in some in some way sanctioned this operation you're, you're becoming an ambassador for this type of thing. People look at you and record and the life you lead and things, a record and life you lead, you've done, which is extra, extraordinary. In some ways, you're legitimizing what OceanGate is doing. Now, there seems to be a lot of people, you know, who this in this community, you know, most of us, we've never heard of OceanGate or, you know, anything like that. But this was a relatively small community and people... um people that knew about it knew it was doomed to fail yet it just continued to go on they had warned Nargole or Nar Nargole I'm not sure exactly how that's pronounced that the Ocean Gate CEO had previously brushed off safety concerns going as far as 
calling the Titan a monstrosity built with outdated and unpredictable parts. But he said he received messages from others he had warned against going on the Ocean Gate expedition, thanking him. After hearing what happened to the vessel, I sat here with my wife and daughter, and we just wept and wept, he said. Others echoed Leahy's concerns, including Rob McCallum, a consultant for OceanGate, who told Rush he was putting lives of his passengers at risk by not having his submersible certified by third parties. Rush ultimately shot down concerns, slamming safety warnings about the craft as baseless cries and a personal insult. Well, I think that you have a situation here where, you know, obviously you have a, a CEO that isn't used to being told no. Somebody who may or may not be extraordinarily um, passionate about it. It, it. It's possible. Um, but it's certainly somebody who turned many corner, cut many quarters, corners and was absolutely fine to do so. You see, the grieving wife and mother of two above the tar Titan submersible said uh, that they did not know that those on the boat did not even know the possibility of, of an implosion an agonizing wait for the vessel to resurface until a call with the U.S. Coast Guard confirmed that they had found it. U.S.-based billionaire Shahzada, Shahzada and his son Suleiman were two of the five people on there. Of course, the Navy detected sounds that were consistent with an implosion soon after the Titan lost contact on Sunday, but it was deemed, quote, not definitive, and the detail was not released publicly. Well, until certain other news stories had run their course, according to some people with the search and rescue mission continuing until debris was found. Wife and mother of Shazada and Suleiman, Christine DeWood, has said that she believed she would in, in initially be fine when they lost communication, but she lost hope after 96 hours, followed by a call from the U.S. Coast Guard, which confirmed that the debris had been found. Man, why would you give an interview? It's so crazy. Like, something terrible happened to my family. I mean, they're not even, I mean, it's, it's like the two days later and some news reporters like share your grief with the world. Why? I don't understand. Anyway, in an extraordinary, extraordinary BBC interview where Mrs. DeWood was praised for her composure in the face of interminable double mourning, interminable double mourning. She revealed that she and her daughter, Alina 17 were on the uh, Titan support ship, polar Prince and hugged and joked with the excited, Shazada and Suleiman, as they said goodbye and went in to get into the doomed sub. Hours later, they lost communication on that day, and she believed they would be fine if they didn't, after they didn't initially return. Now, Ms. Wood said she finally lost hope on Thursday when 96 hours had passed since her husband and son on board the submersible, meaning they had run out of oxygen. Her daughter held out a bit longer until a call with the Coast Guard later. Uh, well, yeah, it's so weird. She was, of course, supposed to be on it as well. They tried to remain hopeful. And, you know, it's, it's interesting how you can kind of convince yourself of, um, you know, a, 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 impossible odds. Because it does seem like it happens all the time. One in a million, one in a zillion. I mean, if somebody wins the lottery every other week, you know, and it's interesting um, the fact that certain things, you know, they weren't even told that implosion was... You can see they were not told about the possibility of implosion during agonizing four-day wait for a vessel to resurface. Now, the people on the boat, certainly you're, you would expect that they do some sort of some level of research uh, and figure out, hey, these are some possibilities, uh, <laughs> the things that might happen. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, it's tough. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, the kid that was on the bus brought a Rubik's Cube to break a record. Um, and there's not a lot of, how do we say information now going forward, uh, about this, you know, the, the, the idea that the CEO was on a predatory hunt for investors. Um, you know, then there's submersible experts, all this stuff is ignored. The submarine expert desperately tried to dissuade his friend, OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush from taking customers in the Titan submersible, warning him against succumbing to the pressures of your own creation new emails show. And you see here in these new emails, uh, the CEO added the company was aiming for as many as five more 4,000 foot dives to get more data on the acoustics. Several days later, Stanley responded with, quote, a few thoughts, including how two to seven dives to operating depth were far too few to launch an expedition selling six-figure tickets to the middle of the ocean. 
Tickets to visit the Titanic shipwreck on the Titanic. A Titan submersible costs 250K. Quote, I think 50 is a good number, Stanley wrote, setting the number of tests he conducted with his submersible vessel, Seabug, which stands for Controlled Buoyancy Underwater Glider. According to Maximum uh, Mag Magazine Profile Stanley, Seabug was the first designed to reach a maximum depth of just 725 feet. Stanley now operates a vessel that can descend about 2,000 feet below the sea level. The Titan, in comparison, was advertised to reach depths of more than 13,000 feet. Stanley offered another analogy with skydiving. 50 is the same number required to receive what's known as a sport as a B license. The submersible expert also reiterated his concern about the hull. Quote, I think that the hull has a de defect near that flange that will only get worse. The only question in my mind is, will it fail catastrophically or not? Stanley wrote. In response, Rush told Stanley that more tests would be conducted, but the CEO dismissed the idea of conducting 50 tests and said that the parachute training analogy was a poor comparison. I suspect no deep diving sub did 50 MOD dives before non-essential crew were taken. Rush argued that Stanley's suggestion was arbitrary dive number and that testing may take two dives or 20. But Stanley pushing back saying that he came to that number based on his experience and that other experts agreed that it was a good indicator. Um, again, more, you know, just more information that he completely ignored uh, everybody telling him not to go. I suspect massive lawsuits in the near future, um, but I don't know who's even left and what money you might even be able to get from them. I hope, or you're, I hope you were informed by this video. If you were, please do leave a like on it and subscribe down below, and we'll talk to you again real soon.